Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. God bless you and thank you for joining us this morning for Temple of Refuge Church Live. We're excited that you all decided to join us this morning as we gather to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we magnify you and we glorify your name for yet and again another opportunity to call upon your holy and righteous name. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your tender mercy. For all the blessings of life, we say thank you on this morning. We ask now, O oh God, that your presence would meet us in this place, that you, O oh God, would allow your spirit to inhabit the praises of your people. We thank you this morning for the opportunity of worship, and we pray and ask, O oh God, that your presence would meet us Oh, God, at the point of every need, even on this morning, we thank you for what we know you're going to do. Touch somebody's life, change somebody's mind, fix somebody's heart. Do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. We give you praise for it now. In Jesus' wonderful and mighty name we pray, amen and amen. I want to read just a few verses of uh, Psalm 18 here, a Psalm of David. Uh, just the first uh, three verses of Psalm 18, there you'll find these words. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the name of the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. That is Psalm 18 verses 1 through 3. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Again, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I know you could be anywhere else tuned in to some other live stream, but I thank God for each and every one of you that took the time on this Sunday morning to join us in worship. This is what I want you to do if you hadn't already done it. I want you to share this. Hit that share button on your Facebook page and share this experience with those who follow you on Facebook. Tag somebody. Text your family. Tell them to get up. Rise and shine. It's time for worship. Amen. Invite them to join us because I believe and know that God has something special for each and every person that is tuned in on today. This is what I want you to do. Get up out of your seats. Get up out of the bed. Amen. Let's prepare to worship the Lord together as Brother Sean Rainey shall come and take us further in our worship experience. Come on, right in your pajamas, right in your bedroom. Come on, get up. And I want you to move with the music, clap your hands, and let's worship the Lord together. Let's receive our psalmist, Brother Sean Rainey. Come on, right where you are, can you begin to thank and worship a holy God? Come on, a faithful God, an awesome God, a healing God, a saving God. Right there, can you lift your voices? And can you find yourselves with your family? Just begin to worship him. Just begin to honor him. Just begin to give him glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We say that I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. We say that I call you holy because your name is holy holy you are and holy you'll be said holy you'll be where you are say i call you i call you holy. your name is, name is holy. you are so holy said i call you holy Yeah, yeah, we 
will say, we will say, yeah, yeah. I call you awesome, say, what an awesome God. open up your mouth and thank God for the position that he has in your life come on thank him for being holy thank him for being righteous thank him for being awesome anything that you can put in that space right there thank him for it 
Because the Bible says in all things that we are to give thanks. It's the will of the Lord that's concerning our lives. Right there, open up your mouth and thank him for being everything you needed him to be. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you shall be. Don't we thank God for Brother Sean Rainey and how the Lord used him on this morning? Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Let's pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we thank you and we honor you for the opportunity and the privilege to call upon your name this morning. Lord, I ask now that you would allow us to decrease and that you would increase. For God, it's not about me. It's all about you. It's about your word and what you have in store for your people. So in spite of us, let your word go forth with power and under the unction of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for it now and we give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. This is what I want you to do. Grab your Bibles now and turn with me to the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter number three. Habakkuk three. And I want to begin reading uh, these last a few verses of Habakkuk chapter number three. Habakkuk three and beginning at verse number 17. There you'll find these words, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herds in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on high, on my high heels. That's Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Allow me to reread re verse number 18. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will joy in in the God of my salvation. I want to talk for a few moments. I want to talk about the power of a counter expectation. The power of a counter expectation. Write that in the chat box. Tell somebody the preacher is going to talk about the power of a counter expectation. The challenges, my brothers and sisters, that many of us are facing presently is how do we handle these times of pandemic that are filled with disappointment, while at the same time maintain a good witness as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. The reality, my people, is that uh, if, if I can just keep it real for a moment, the reality is that there's a lot of people who are sad and dealing with depression, uh, both believer and non-believer. By no means now do I seek to disqualify the legitimacy of depression or just sheer sadness, but I would suffice to say that some of what people are experiencing is a result of the church now not dealing with the reality of disappointment. Truth of the matter is, we will all have and will experience heartbreak and heartache. We will go through times of sadness and loneliness, sickness, pain, loss, and a great deal of disappointment. How do we address disappointment and handle it when it shows up in our lives and it will? It was my contemplation on that question that brought me to our text on this morning. In the background now, just by way of introduction, the Minor Prophet book of Habakkuk consists of just three short chapters. The first chapter foreshadows the invasion of Judea by the Chaldeans. And in the second chapter, Habakkuk foretells of the doom of the Chaldeans. The book then concludes with the prophet's prayer and psalm or hymn of praise in chapter 3. Typically now when we deal with the book of Habakkuk, we teach from the perspective of the Lord's declaration to Habakkuk to write the vision and make it plain. That though the vision tarry, wait for it because it will surely 
come. However, when one reads the entire book, it unfolds just how intricately involved the Lord is in the affairs of his people. He is truly now a God who makes plans and ensures that his plans for the lives of his people will come to pass. Because now of their unwillingness to obey the Lord and to follow his directives, the people found themselves suffering the consequences of their sins. But even in that, my brothers and sisters, the Lord was faithful in that he did not permit those things to their utter destruction. Yeah, he simply allowed Judea to be invaded by the Chaldeans, using them, in essence, using the enemy to exercise his will. In prophecy after prophecy, in word after word, the Lord ensured his people that in spite of what hardships they encountered, it would somehow, in fact, work together for their good. However, much like today, regardless of how much the Lord's word and assurance that they had, the Israelites allowed their circumstances to dictate and control their very lives. Yeah, the Bible says now that they cried and they lamented. They put on sackcloth and ashes and they refused to sing the Lord's songs in a strange land. Yeah, instead of thanking God for keeping them, instead of giving God praise for sustaining their lives, they instead withheld the praise and literally blamed God for their troubles. Oh, my brothers and sisters, that sounds so familiar. Yeah, it sounds like us, even on today, who are guilty of doing the same thing. Yeah, so caught up in what we're going through. So downtrodden by the difficulties of life. So frustrated by the woes of this pandemic. Yeah, that we literally at times shut down the praise and thanksgiving and adoration that we ought to give to God. Sending this signal that we perhaps in essence blame God for where we are. Instead of understanding that it should be a point of praise and thanksgiving for his goodness shown forth in our lives the climax then of the book of Habakkuk closes out in this final chapter with one of the great affirmations of faith in all of scripture yeah this affirmation of faith was important in Habakkuk time and in particular in our current time this is an important affirmation of faith why because we're living in a time where there's a great deal of questioning as to the validity of faith in God we're in a time where people are asking if whether or not the things that they do to please the Lord and live a godly life are even worth it especially considering now the seeming advancement and prosperity of those who could care less about faith in God yeah while the wicked seem to live carefree lives the people of God committed to the cause of Christ and living in a manner that pleases him seem to always be going through something and dealing with one calamity and disappointment after the next Habakkuk now deals with this in closing his writings and gives some insight on how to handle the disappointment and the setback and my brothers and sisters I want to lift these things this morning because I understand that it is the plan of the enemy to cause us to fall by the wayside when we're experiencing the disappointments of this life. A couple of things I want to lift and I'm going to bid y'all good morning. First of all, notice now according to verse 17, the sheer volume and severity of the difficulties that the people of God are facing. Look at it now in verse 17 and notice now the sheer volume and, and, and how intense their difficulties are. Verse 17 says, though the fig tree may not blossom, 
No fruit of grapes on the vines. The oil give the olive rather gives no oil. The fields fail and give no crop. The sheep are cut off and no cattle or oxen are in the stalls. Six concessive circumstances that the children of Israel have to now contend with. All in the midst of their land, their home, being invaded by their enemies. It wasn't merely just one situation, one setback, but it was a multitude of things the children of Israel had to contend with all at the same time. Scripture tells us that the Lord put, wouldn't put more on us than we can bear, and yet six contentions, six difficulties, uh, six unfavorable conditions all at once seems unbearable. We've all had to, my brothers and sisters, deal with seasons where we had to make the announcement and just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, it in fact did. Some of us have prayed in faith and made our requests known unto God and the thing prayed about took a turn for the worse. Yeah, what do you do when your faith and your prayer in faith rather seems to fall on deaf ears? Yeah, what do you do when uh, it, it seems as if the more you pray, the worse it gets? Job, remember, goes through a time of consecutive difficulty in Job chapter 1. Yeah, Job's oxen and donkeys were stolen by the Sibians, and his servants were killed. Yeah, the story goes on to say that fire fell and burned up the sheep and his servants. Yeah, while he was being informed of that news, somebody told him the Chaldeans raided him and took the camels and killed the servants. Yeah, while he was getting that report, somebody informed him that all of his sons and daughters were killed when a windstorm knocked down the house where they were gathered couple of things first of all the people who informed him of every calamity was actually someone who was in it with them but escaped in order to inform Job in other words my brothers and sisters what Job had gone through the events that had transpired are factual literally stripping Job of his hope of recovery in other words, it's one thing to hear that a strong wind gust uh, came through your town. But it's another thing to hear that the wind gust wasn't just in your town, but it hit your address. Not only that, but notice the writer tells us on the onset of Job's loss in Job chapter 1, verse 13 begins, now there was a day. In other words, everything that Job lost all happened in one day. We can only imagine the devastation and the pain that Job is experiencing. But notice with Job, as it is with our text in Habakkuk, that the series of calamities grew worse from one to the other. Job lost his oxen and donkeys, then worse, his sheep, then worse, his camel, and even worse still, his children, and then of course worse, his wife then tells him to curse God and die. Yeah, Habakkuk states first the figs, then the grapes, next the olives. Yeah, the crops fail, the sheep are cut off, then the cattle or the oxen. Can we go through like this, my brothers and sisters, and not lose heart? We have now indoctrinated the church with so much prosperity teaching, so much name it, claim it, so much new house, new car, material blessings that we fail to teach the people of God how to endure. Yeah, we, we, we taught so much prosperity uh, that we fell short in teaching people how to go through. We want to be encouraged and be made to feel good when it comes to our relationship with God and especially the church. Yeah, church for many people was no longer a place where we come and offer our God-given gifts and talents for the agenda that God has in the earth. 
For some people, especially since the pandemic has prohibited our gathering for public church, it has revealed now a local church as a type of drug house. Yeah, where we come and get a quick high that creates a state of euphoria to forget about the problems that we're going through for an hour or two. But my brother and sister's life is real. And on occasion, life is hard. And just because you you're saved just because you're sanctified just because you love God does not mean that you're going to be given a card to bypass all the troubles in this life no you're going to go through you're going to experience hardship you're going to go through difficulties you're going to have times in your life where you scratch your head and try to figure out what in the world is going on but my brothers and sisters in the midst of it we must take hope and have joy in the fact that it will not end the way that it started yeah and that's one of the things that I love about Habakkuk is that even though he starts out in the first couple of chapters talking about the calamities that the people will experience he then closes by letting us know that at the end of the day that the children of Israel will yet and still experience victory yeah, and somebody right there need to lift your hands and give God praise because in the midst of what you may be presently experiencing I need you to get a praise in your spirit uh, because it will not in the way that it presently is yeah you will end in victory you will end with more than enough you will end with a praise in your spirit signifying that God didn't leave you where you were but he brought you through he spared your life therefore you ought to open up your mouth right where you are and give him the praise that is due unto him Notice secondly now in verse 17 Habakkuk now makes note of what scholars many scholars call the imminent possibilities of life. One of the key words now the passage in verse 17 y'all pray me through I'm trying to hurry up. Yeah one of the key words in verse 17 is the key word though. The structure of the passage then helps us to determine the meaning of verse 17 now, which consists of six conditional clauses controlled by the key word, though. The six clauses or calamities, my brothers and sisters, are introduced to us with the key word, though, suggesting possibility. We know now that the writer lists the troubles in verse 17 in the order of severity with the loss of figs ranking the least to the loss of cattle and oxen causing the greatest economic damage. Figs served as a delicacy in Israel, but their loss did not produce severe hardship. Grapes provided the daily drink but again the loss of the fruit of the vine would produce inconvenience rather than hardship the olives on the other hand produced the oil that they needed for cooking and for lighting grain barley and wheat provided for the main diet of the Israelites the failure of the fields to produce food might mean starvation for a large segment of the population yeah, both sheep and cattle made up much of the wealth in Palestine. Sheep and goat now provided wool and the occasional meat for the Israelites. Hebrews did not now normally eat cattle, but they were used for preparing the soil and planting and other heavy work. The loss of any of these individually might be survived. But altogether, the loss of these six things spelled economic disaster, devastating loss of hope, loss of daily provision, and loss of their economic strength. Again, Habakkuk uses the word though for each clause to express that all of these are possibilities that could likely happen. And the truth of the matter is, my brothers and sisters, imminent possibilities are all around us. And a constant reminder of a reality that we don't actually give much consideration to. 
When we lay down last night, there was the possibility that we may not wake up. When we drive from one place to the other, there is the possibility of not making it safe. Uh, come on, talk to me. When we, when we go to work, in particular in this economic climate that has been created by COVID-19, there's the possibility of job layoff. Yeah, every venture away from home into other environments carries the possibility of contracting coronavirus. Yeah, even when we lay down tonight, there's a possibility that we may not see tomorrow. And you might say, preacher, why are you being so negative right now? Well, the issue is not negativity. The issue is the reality of imminent possibilities that we constantly face, not to highlight the negative, but as a reminder of our hope and where our faith should lie. Life's possibilities should help produce growing faith, but sadly for many, it produces an air of arrogance that signals the promotion of self more than God. That's why we jump in the bed at night and go to sleep without much consideration of the acknowledgement of the one that is needed to wake us up. We have grown confident in our own abilities and talents resulting in dependence in self more than in God. Yeah, the saints of old now had a saying to express possibilities face and where their hope must lie. They declared that had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. Yeah, the possibilities of where I would be, the possibility of where I could be or should be, but God. Now we have to become spiritual cheerleaders in order to pump somebody up, in order to get a praise out of our mind. We have to have certain things in place within ministry to help get our minds right to offer up praise unto God because we forgot all about the possibility of what could have happened but didn't. And that's a good place to pause right there and for somebody that's watching me to lift your hands and give God praise because you know for yourself that all of your life you have faced some imminent possibilities. Yeah, all of your life imminent possibilities are all around you. Yeah, in other words, there's some things that should have happened because of even some of the seeds sown and some of the, de the decisions that you made in times past. But aren't you glad that in the midst of those imminent possibilities Possibilities, the Lord yet and still sustain your life. Yeah, don't sit there just looking at me like I'm crazy. Well, you know for yourself that you live all around imminent possibilities. But thank God that He extended His grace and His mercy upon our lives, and the things that should have happened didn't happen. Yeah, don't sit there and look at me like you deserve to be here and like you deserve the favor of God. You ought to lift your hands and open up your mouth and give God. God praise you ought to clap right in your house and tell God thank you because there's some things that could have happened had it not been for God who stopped it who blocked it and didn't allow it to happen come on right where you are lift your hands and say God I just want to thank you that in the midst of imminent possibilities you sustain my life the last thing I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, is I want to point out now, as I heard to a close, in verse 18, which is a response to verse 17 and the imminent possibilities. Verse 18 now gives us uh, what I want to call a counter expectation. After a series now of calamities and making note now of the imminent possibilities that are listed in verse 17, Habakkuk gives a response that is totally the expectation of what should happen. It is in fact the power of a counter expectation. Yeah, the word counter now means something that is opposite or contrary to something else. It's a statement or action made to refute, oppose, or nullify another statement or action. In other words, as a result of the figs not blooming, no grapes on the vine, the oil failing, no harvest to reap, no sheepfold, and no cattle in the stalls, as a result of these six calamities, yeah, you would think, you would make the assumption that the people now 
would throw in the towel, that they would quit and do nothing but wait on the certainty of death. However, Habakkuk unleashes, if you will, a counterpunch. He unleashes a counter expectation. Yes, something opposite of what was expected to happen. Yeah, in the blockbuster movie, Black Panther, T'Challa's sister, Prince Suri, creates now for him a suit that he would wear, and she gives it a feature that when someone hit the Black Panther, he would then absorb that heat and give a counter blow with the same energy that was absorbed from the initial blow that was given. <laughs> yeah, Habakkuk now gives a counter punch, a counter expectation. Yeah, refuting the expectation of verse 17's results. Habakkuk and the children of Israel were hit with no figs, punched with no grapes, hit again with no oil from olives, struck with no food and possible starvation, punched with no sheepfold, hit with no oxen or cattle in the stalls. Yeah, the expectation from all of this is hopelessness. The expectation from all of this is pity party and depression. The expectation from all of this is woe is me. Yeah, you would expect that because after all, they're human. But Habakkuk, what I love about it is that he gives a counter expectation. He gives, if you will, a counter punch. Yeah, verse 18 gives us the counter punch with the signal of the key word yet. In other words, when they go through that list of severities in verse 17, yeah, those imminent possibilities, yeah, Habakkuk turns around and flips the script and issues a counter expectation. Yeah, he gives us the signal with the key word, yet. Yeah, he says in verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. That's, that's counter of the expectations of what should come as a result of verse 17. Uh, he says in verse 18, yet I will joy in the God of my salvation. And we see these counter punches, these counter expectations all throughout the word of God. After Job lost his cattle, I'm hurrying y'all. After Job lost his cattle, his donkeys, his camel, after he lost his house, after losing his children and his wife. The expectation would seem to place Job now on suicide watch. But what I love about Job is that Job issued a counterpunch. Job issued a counter expectation. The Bible says in the midst of him getting all of the bad news, yeah, all of the imminent possibilities that had come upon Job's life, Job turned around and issued a counter expectation. The Bible says that he fell on the ground and he began to worship the Lord. And he declared that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah, Job said, though he slay me, yet counter expectation, yet I will trust the Lord. The psalmist declared in Psalm 42 and verse number 5, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet, yeah, counter expectation, I shall yet Praise him for the help of his countenance. The psalmist declared in Psalm 46 verses 1 through 5. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Yeah, therefore we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried away into the midst of the sea. Yeah, though his waters roar and be troubled. Yeah, though the mountains shake with swelling. Yeah, verse number four is the counter expectation. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of our God. Yeah, the psalmist also in Psalm 27. Yeah, verses one through three declared that the Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. Though an army may encamp against me, yeah, counter expectation. My heart shall not fear, though war may rise against me, counterpunch, in this will I be confident. Luke chapter number 7 tells us the story of Jesus as he went through the city called Nain and as he approached the gates of the city the Bible says that there was a funeral procession passing by a mother was on her way to the cemetery in order to bury her only son and the Bible says that she was a widow yeah the expectation for this mother was loneliness yeah the expectation for this mother was a future hope of poverty the expectation for this mother is the possibility of homelessness yeah her son is dead and the expectation for this woman is possible prostitution and living and begging on the street ah but whenever Jesus shows up he always deals a counter expectation for the Bible says that Jesus showed up and he stopped the funeral the Bible says that he touched the coffin and said to the young man arise and he who was dead sat up and began to speak and Jesus delivered him back to his mother in other words Jesus issued a counter punch a counter expectation I know you was expecting one thing but thanks be unto God something else is about to happen it's a counter expectation to refute what was getting ready to happen Jesus even declared that they're going to arrest me Jesus declared that they're going to beat me they're going to kill me they're going to bury me but thanks be unto God I'm gonna let you know in advance that there's gonna be a counter expectation for in three days I shall rise again and part of the reason that the enemy hates you part of the reason that the devil hates your guts is because you keep dishing out counter punches you keep hitting the enemy with all kind of stuff because every time he turns around and dishes out to you the difficulties of life every time he turns around and issues the imminent possibilities of life and even now in the midst of a global health crisis even in the midst of sickness all around us even in the midst of death and darkness all around us thanks be unto God all you did was turn around and issue a counter expectation because when the difficulties came I thank God that you didn't quit when the difficulties came you didn't throw in the towel you didn't walk away from God you didn't close up your Bibles you didn't stop praying you didn't stop worshiping and you didn't stop giving God the praise that is due unto his name but you absorbed every punch and you turn around and told the devil how you like me now and you had the unmitigated gall to issue a counter punch you had the unmitigated gall to issue a counter expectation you lifted your hands you you opened up your mouth and you told the enemy you shot your best shot but I I will bless the Lord at all times his praises shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the Lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad go ahead 
dish out a counterpunch. Go ahead and issue a counter expectation. And here it is. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. In other words, every time you found yourself going through, you were yet and still able to stand on your feet and let the devil know that yes, it might be rough. Yes, I might be going through. Yes, it might be severe. Yes, the job might lay me off. Yes, the money is short. Yes, I might be sick in my body. Yes, death has hit my family. Yes, I'm going through trial, difficulty, bad health, bad economy. Yet, I'm going to turn around and do opposite of what's expected that I should do. And I'm going to issue a sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, I got to go, I got to quit, I got to bid you good morning, but just in case the enemy thought he was winning, all around me with death all around me with joy that's been drained with hope that's been dashed I want to say and remind somebody that I I shall not die but live counter expectation <laughs> in the midst of imminent possibilities all around us somebody like me you are determined. no 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 I'm not gonna allow what should happen what could happen hallelujah what did happen hallelujah to cause me to turn around and accept defeat I'm gonna issue a counter expectation I'm going to absorb all of the hits of life and then I'm going to turn around and issue a counter punch that's what Habakkuk was doing to close out chapter 3 he said yeah though the fig though the fig fail though the olive gives no more oil though the sheepfold are no more the cattle though the field yields no more crops these six calamities although they come Habakkuk says in verse 18 yet I'm going to do the opposite I'm going to show you the power of a counter expectation my brothers and sisters that's, that should be the design and the plan for all of our lives that we will not succumb to this pandemic and allow it to strip and drain us of the motivation that we need to continue living this life and see every plan and every dream and every promise that God has made us to unfold in this life. Come on, lift your hands. I believe God, hallelujah, that in the midst of it all, he sustains us so that we can turn around 
an issue, a counter expectation, something opposite and different, what should happen. And for many people, the enemy is confused because when he considers everything that you're going through, you shouldn't have a smile on your face. You shouldn't have a praise in your spirit, but you learn the importance of the power of a counter expectation to do opposite of the imminent possibilities that comes our way. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy over our lives. Father, this morning I thank you and I give you praise for the opportunity to share with your people. And I pray, Father, that this word would encourage somebody's heart. This word will strengthen somebody. This word will bless and undergird somebody's life. Somebody who's been frustrated dealing with the imminent possibilities of life. I pray, Father, that you sustain them and open their understanding, that they'll understand that everything that's hitting them is intended for them to turn around and issue a counter expectation to do opposite of that in which the imminent possibilities tries to dictate in their lives. I thank you for your word, for every person and every family and every home that's tuned in today. I speak blessings over their lives. I pray, God, that you would open up that door, make those ways, turn those situations around, bring their family closer together, strengthen their relationship and their walk with you. We thank you this morning for what we know you're going to do, and we give your name the praise for you alone are worthy of all of the praise. We thank you and we give you praise we give you glory even now. Somebody watching me, Lord, need to rededicate and recommit their, their lives to you. Somebody watching me needs to say yes to you, Lord. And I pray that you would touch somebody's life now. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we give you praise. Amen and amen. Somebody watching me today, you know for yourself that you're not where you need to be in God. Your life is not surrendered to him. I want to invite you right where you are, my brothers and sisters, to accept Jesus and allow him to come into your life. Make that decision today. Make him your choice today. I offer him to you. He's willing. He's able. He's available. And he's calling you even now. If you don't know him in the free part of your sin, do me a favor. Right there in that chat box, you would notice a connection card. I want you to fill that card out. Preacher, somebody needs to reach out to me. Get in touch with me because I'm ready to say yes to the Lord. You don't have to wait for somebody to contact you. You can say yes to him right now. The Bible says that if we believe in our hearts and we confess with our mouth that we are saved, what am I to believe? I need to believe that Jesus sent his only begotten son. What do I need to believe? I need to believe that he died. He took upon himself the penalty of my sin. I need to believe that he died. I need to believe that on the third day he rose from the grave with all power in his hands. I need to believe that he ascended back to the Father and that one day he'll come again. If I believe that in my heart, if I confess that with my mouth, the Bible says that I am saved. And somebody today watching me, you've just made that decision or you're ready to make that decision. Fill that connection card out right there in the chat box or you can go to templarefuge.org, fill out that connection card, click on that connect button, fill that information out and we'll be back in touch with you real soon somebody life is already surrendered to christ but you're not a part of a church family those of you who are watching me and you want to be a part of the temple refuge family you don't have to wait for us to come back to public gathering amen you can join us right in this space right in this time you can connect with us right now all you got to do is fill out that connection card i thank god for those of you who have made that decision and you've connected with this ministry you filled out that connection card I thank God for each and every one of you. Somebody else watching me need to make that decision today. Preacher, I want to be a part of this ministry. I want to be covered by this ministry, by the Temple of Refuge. I believe God is calling you even on today. Fill that connection card out, and we'll be back in touch with you real soon. I thank God for each and every one of you. You could have tuned in to somebody else, but you tuned in to us today. And I thank God for you on this morning. Let's prepare now to worship the Lord in a time of giving. And this is an opportunity for everyone to share and participate with us. If you would just uh, take the time now to prepare yourself. And I want everybody to share with us, those of you who can. 
amen. If you're working a job or you're receiving income of any sort, the Bible says that 10% of that has already been designated, earmarked as holy and belonging to God. And so God requires, he doesn't do like, uh, uh, like the government, he doesn't take it out. God requires that we bring it, that we willingly offer it up to him. And so in obedience to his word, we take this moment to share offertory gifts by way of tithes and offering and you'll notice on the screen that there's several ways that you can share in giving with us and I want you my brothers and sisters to take note of those ways and share with us you can use text to give just text the word give g-i-v-e to 704-228-4330 and share with us by way of text to give. You can use Cash App, dollar sign, Temple of Refuge, write that all the way out and share with us in Cash App. You can go to our church website and you can give securely right there on the website, templeofrefuge.org and share with us in giving, amen. The address is there as well. If you wanna just mail in a check, amen. We want you to share with us by way of giving. I know and believe that God blesses us as a result of our giving amen he don't bless us based on how much we give hallelujah it may be somebody watching me you don't have anything to give the good news is that if you have a desire god will make a way for you god will open up a door for you because he gives seed to sores and i'm praying for many of you for that job door to open i'm praying for you for that increase to come i'm praying for you for that business opportunity to come your way that God will prepare you and bless you so that you'll be able to share by way of giving and meet the needs of your house and yet and still be able to be a blessing unto others. I believe that today because God is our source and he is our strength. It's in him that we put our trust and our hope. And so thank you all for sharing with us. Thank you for giving with us and thank you for visiting us today again. I'm excited that you took the time out of your schedule to join us on this morning. Listen, we'll be right back here Tuesday night sharing in Bible study at 7 p.m. I look forward to sharing with you all on Tuesday night as well as Thursday night at 7 p.m. as well. We're in the midst of our 21 days of consecration. We're coming down to the final uh, week, the final few days, and so we want you all to finish strong. Some of you fell by the wayside. Amen. Get back on point get back on course and let's finish this time of consecration that ends next sunday at 6 a.m is the closing of our time of consecration and we're reading our devotional scriptures we want you to join us amen and share in those devotional scriptures with us i believe the lord will bless you real good as a result of your participation in this season of consecration amen were you blessed today let us know in the chat box amen share with us and let us know if you were blessed by the word and the worship on today again we thank god for brother sean rainey and the lord using him mightily to lead us in a time of worship god bless each and every one of you and we look forward to sharing with you uh, on this week our prayers now continue continue for each other we're praying every morning at 7 a.m and every night at 9 p.m we want you to join us uh, in prayer let's lift up sister Teresa smith and her family uh, as on this coming thursday they'll be uh, laying brother tony her husband to rest we want to keep uh, sister Teresa smith and her family uh, in our prayers as well as sister april bennett uh, who lost her mother we want to lift her and her family up uh, in our prayers as well and others who are dealing with sickness and challenges uh, sister tammy Gould and her family continuing to lift them up uh, as well god is able hallelujah he's able and so we believe and trust uh, that he will provide strength he will provide healing he will provide comfort we know him as the god of all comfort father i thank you now for your word i thank you for what you've spoken in this place today thank you for sharing with us the power of a counter expectation we thank you for your word what we've heard what we've received by way of this word and this worship bless your people now give them an amazing week continue to cover them and keep them and strengthen them like only you can we pray for sister Teresa smith we pray for sister april bennett we pray for others oh god who are dealing with the loss of loved ones and those who are dealing with sickness i pray lord that you would just touch them in their bodies we lift up uh, sister alicia jawu's brother-in-law i pray god that you would bring healing and restoration 
to his body, Lord, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. I thank you because you are the Lord thy God that heals and there is nothing that is too hard for you. We give you praise and glory for it even now. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with all of you God's people. Henceforth, now and forevermore, let everybody say amen. God bless you and I will see you all on Tuesday night. God bless.